Building pipelines is very important when we want to provide a continuous delivery tool. And it's very important in the DevOps context when we want to, after deploying a new version of our code in some source control system, we want to have this code already delivered to the users to utilize that. And we can do that automatically by building pipelines when we can define each step that has to be executed after we have a new version of our code available. So this is the goal of this video, show to you how to use Jenkins to provide the delivering of a new version of React app um, in one server after we have one new version of this product available in one Git system. In this case, we are going to use GitHub. Then I'm going to present to you how to execute this example, but with a few adaptions that I think turns this execution easier. So let's begin with that step-by-step -step executing the whole Jenkins pipeline building and execution. The first step we have to execute when want to build our Jenkins pipeline is to have Jenkins installed and configured. And to have our Jenkins properly prepared, we are going to build that based in one image that already will contain the whole dependence we are going to need. This Docker file, this code, I'm going to deliver to you below in the video description. And it was based in the code available in the example provided in the Jenkins website. But I have prepared here a few adjustments to make that easier and more generical to perform some examples. And these adjustments why was to install the Node.js and the NPM directly in the Jenkins machine. And then we are going to be able to execute Node and NPM comments directly in, in the pipeline we are going to build. Okay, so you have, just have to create one Docker file with this content that's based in one standard and official Jenkins image. And then you have to build one image from this Docker file using this command. I'm just not going to execute that now because it takes a lot of time because this apt-get, then install Docker, install node, install npm, it takes some minutes to conclude. But then you have just to open your your command prompt and execute that. And after you have executed this, this build command, this also is available to you in the video description. You have just to enter in the directory where you have this Docker file and execute this command. And then if you ask to see the Docker images, you are going to see here this image created. And then this will be the basis for we to create one container based in this image. And then we are going to have Docker a Docker container with Jenkins available to be utilized. Once we have our image prepared, we have then to create, to instantiate one container based in this image. So after we have utilized that Docker file to build one image, we are going to then create and run one container based on that. And for this purpose, we are going to execute this run command, okay? This code also is below in video description and it was also based in the example of pipelines creation available in the Jenks website, but also with a few adjustments. In this case, the adjustment I have provided here is to also open the port 3000 directly in the Jenks container. It will be easier to publish our application in the end of the pipeline. Basically, what this run command do? It creates the container based in the image we have just built with, with docker build command. Then it creates one network, very important to perform the communication between containers. It's in the case we want to use Jenkins to deploy applications in another container. So it's important to have this network. We have some things to certificate. It's, it's important to make the connection valid if we have to perform interactions between different address, okay? We have here the volume, that's quite important because we can stop and also remove 
one specific um, Jenkins container and then run this command again and pointing to the same volume uh, I was created, these volumes here, we never lose the data. So it's nice because I can today use one container. I can then sometimes delete my containers and then create a new container again, but point to the same volume and then the data is there. So it's very nice. I don't have to install from zero every time I'm going to use Jenkins. Okay, and here it opens the ports. Okay, it opens the port 880 because Jenkins web interface run here. Here the port um, 50,000 is for administrative tasks. And then we have this port here, 2000, just for deployment, our own applications listen at this port. So you just are going to run this statement here and it's going to perform the execution until the end. And after that, you can then just type docker container ps and you should see here, like I, I have here, the container created based in this image and then it is going to have one specific ID and it will be important for you later if you have to interact with that. Okay, so let's go to the next step where we are going to access this Jenkins that's now running in one Docker container. Now we have executed our container from a Jenkins image. We have opened the port 880 and then we can access that from the web interface. If it's our first access, probably it will ask you to input the installation key. It's presented in the console when you install Jenkins from first time or you can also open the Jenkins logs to see that directly in your container. There is one link in the video description for one video specifically for that, but it's a very simple and intuitive. After you have your Jenkins then prepared and installed, you can just enter here with the user and password you have created after performing the installation process. So now just access that. And what you have to see here is how to create the pipeline item. Here I have some already created that we are going to use in, in the examples, but I'm going to show you how to create one from zero. Basically, you have to come here, new item, then you have to put the item name, like here, my Jenkins pipeline, and then click, click here in pipeline, this option, and then just conclude the operation. Now, there are a few ways to, to do this pipeline. And the one we are going to be to do here is based that in one code that's available in some source control system, in our case, it will be GitHub. And then we are just going to access that from here. So we can choose here, it's going to be based in a GitHub project. And then here we are going to input the project URL, GitHub project URL. And then there one very important here. This project, we are going to put the URL here, needs to have one very special file inside. That's the Jenkins file. So now before we input the URL from our project here, we are going to take a look in this project and in this Jenkins file for we to understand that. And then we return here at this point. Let's go there. Now, let's take a look in the GitHub project that has the Jenkins file inside. It's very important because it's based in the Jenkins file that Jenkins here will know how to build this pipeline. Basically, what is inside one Jenkins file? Let's open that. This Jenkins file has a few objects here. It has one agent. What's the agent? The agent indicates where this code, where this pipeline will be executed. The original example that's available here in the Jenkins tutorial for building a pipeline proposed the creation of these of this agents in runtime based in one agent that's going to be created with Docker. But it makes some complex activities like perform networks connection during this building process and sometimes it triggers errors. 
So I think it's not the best way for one first example of creating Jenkins pipeline. So in this case, I'm proposing to, we to use this any agent that in our example, it will point directly to the Jenkins computer. And that is the reason when we have created the container, we have opened the port 3000 and we have also installed Node and NPM because our Jenkins computer has all the dependencies to run and execute this pipeline. So basically the pipeline has the agent, that's where it's going to be executed, and it also has the stages. So here I have defined some stages, but you could define the stages you want, it's very flexible. Basically, we inside this stage stages object, we can have a, a lot of stage in singular. And then here we have a stage for build, stage, stage for test, stage for deploy. And for each of these stages, we have several steps. And each step is exactly one instruction you could add in your shell, in your command line interface. So here we just automatize a several of steps that could have manually executed by one system administrator. But then now we configure that inside of a Jenkins pipeline. Okay, and here we have just this post part that thinks to be executed after the, the pipeline has been executed until the end. So now, if you take here one project that has some Jenkins file available, here when we are creating a Jenkins pipeline, it will already read this code and will execute that for us. Um, one very important thing is, is that this project here I, I'm showing to you was also based in a project that was available here in this web page, but with a few adaptions, okay? And you can use directly my one or the one presented here, and just copying this interface, this link, copying this link, and this link is available to you also in the description. So next step now is you to put here this URL, okay? And now we have to inform where is our Docker file. So just have to come here and say the pipeline is not going to be directly placed here, but is directly in the SCM, the system control management, and then it's directly in the Jenkins file. Okay, here we can inform it's a Git-based system and it is enough. Just save that and apply that. Now the project is properly linked with the, um, the GitHub, we can then execute the pipeline that's defined in the Jenkins file. So that's the last step of this video. So let's go there. We have our pipeline item configured, linked to GitHub, informing we are going to use in the Jenkins file that is directly inside the project. We can then execute this pipeline. And for executing that, it's very simple. You just have to click it here in Build Now. Clicking that, it's already going to trigger one new build process. Okay, it's going to initiate one pipeline execution, as you can see here. And you can follow that in runtime, clicking over the link. It's going to present to you the whole execution of the, um, of the progress, showing each of the steps, okay, of its pipeline execution. Here it's taking some time to, to show the details. Let me here, here click here in console output to see more information. And then now it's executing that. We can see here the whole execution of, of the pipeline progress and build stage. Looks we are in the almost in the end. Okay, it's now now installing the dependencies of the of the project with npm install. And then here the pipeline execution. We have to follow until the end. npm install, if you take a look in our per, in our pipeline code here, we are in this step. We still have to go to testing stage, it does nothing here, just printing that in the console. And then in the deploying state, it's going to run the npm start. And then here we have concluded that because then the application will be listening in one specific port to us. 
at the positive 3000 we had opened in the beginning of the video. So now take a look in here, it's still in the PM style. The first time it takes more time because it downloads the whole the whole dependence of your of the React project. But then we have to wait that to conclude its execution. Now it has concluded the npm install has downloaded 1875 packages. Okay, it takes four minutes to conclude the whole processing, and then it has passed through the testing stage where it has done nothing, just printed that message and then deployment. When deployment, it executes the npm start, and then it will make the development server available to listen at this port, the port 3000. Then we click here, and then we are going to access our application that's now running. It means the source code that was originally here in GitHub is now running in one specific port we have defined in the agent at the Jenkins file that is here. So as you can see, we have executed our pipeline from from um, Jenkins. You can see the details of this pipeline by clicking here in pipeline steps. And then we are going to see that uh, more detail if you want that to see the whole things have been executed. If you click here in the status, you can see actually its current stage of, of processing. It's still on executing the last step. And then there's a lot of ways to um, to follow the execution of this of this pipelines execution, okay. So just in clicking here over that, and you can see this graphical interface. Let me turn that is one of most interesting interface to show to you. Where we can see, okay, it returns the wrong link. The, Okay, it jumps automatically to here. But I would like to show to you that we can, can see this interface here, where we can see the stage it has executed. And for each of these stages of the pipeline, we can see the time it takes and also what has been executed. If you click over that, you can see exactly the logs specifically from this stage. Here we have just printed this, this code, but here, for instance, it has executed the npm start, which has executed a lot of stuff and give to us a lot of a lot of information in the console output. Okay, it's that for the execution of pipelines. For working with Jenkins pipeline, the most important stuff is the Jenkins file. It's here where the whole pipeline is defined and every step is informed. So different kind of instructions could be necessary according with the technologies you are adopting. In this example, we are based in one React app, one front-end web app. Basically what we need, we need Node, we need NPM. Okay, we don't need more things than that. So with um, npm commands and node commands, we are able to build and to deploy our, um, our application. But in case you are using another technology, probably you need to have the compiler and the package manager from these technologies installed in your agent, and then they can automatize the steps. So the rule for pipelines definition with Jenkins is basically definitions of agents, definition of stages, and for each stage definitions of steps that are basic, basic commons instructions we could automatize defining step by step. But this step by step could change according with the technologies are you adopting in your project. So that's for this video. Hope you have enjoyed that. It could help you building your own pipelines. Thank you for watching.